What's up guys, it's Cartoon Inc. And today we'll be talking about animes I watched this week. Let's go. I'm going to start off talking about Planet of Man Episode 8. This episode starts off with Revel explaining how Saki became a candidate. And as you know, the only way to become a candidate is because you're close to dying. Saki was going to kill herself by drowning in the ocean because she saw Mirai jumping off the roof. Figure out that Kanade's friend is putting the pieces together and figuring out Kanade might be Metropoly Man. That's not the only thing heating up. Saki invites Mirai into her bed. But then you think, but why the fuck? Saki kicks out the angels so she could talk to Mirai in her own bed. And Mirai was already sleeping in his own. She invited him to her bed because she wanted to tell Mirai to end it all just to kill her. And he's like, nah, put your own faith in your own hands. Grabs her lifts her up to the sky, and allows her to choose whether she wants to die or not. Here's a hard one. Can you guess which one our main character's female best friend chose? I bet you didn't get it. To live, of course. After this incident, Saki is now a happy person and much, much more confident. She shot her parents with the red arrow and said, get out of here. And she said she has two demands to the guys. One is to get a bigger place, and two is to get angel wings. So they figure out how to give her angel wings and... The, her angel just has to be able to be more knowledgeable than another angel and she gets wings after that. The episode ends with a really sad story. We figure out that Nanato is very good at making clothes and his seven year old daughter saw the wedding dress he made for her when she gets older. But since he has cancer, he might not be able to see that day ever. In episode 9 of Planet Amend, we see another god candidate and to me, he might be worse than Metropoly Man because he does this shit. Also, Nanato's family was stolen by the same guy. Just so you don't feel like he's a complete asshole, the story gives you a backstory to him. Hajime Sakatoni was born cursed. He was born ugly and poor, and unfortunately, throughout his life, those things get worse. He was bullied by his classmates growing up. One day, he's walking home from school, so keep in mind that at school, everyone makes fun of his family, and says a lot of mean shit. So he opens the door, and he sees that his mom hanged herself. He can't take it anymore. He grabs the ropes and when he begins to put his head through the ropes, an angel stops him and says, everything will be better when you become God. He ends up stealing money to get plastic surgery and he starts to go to the gym. This was him before and this is him now. There's a huge difference, but I think it's good his face expressions are the same. Fortunately, he still wants more plastic surgery because he tried to talk to this girl who was checking him out, but the moment he talks to her, he doesn't know what to say. Hajime idolizes Metropoly Man and wants to work for him. He gets into contact with him somehow. Fast forward to the end, Metropoly Man can hack into their cell phones and call them. He must have the power and money to do anything. It seems kinda stupid. Anyway, Metropoly Man tells the older man to meet him if not his family will die. In episode 10 of Blue Period, they're on the train to the beach because that's where Ryuji wanted to go. But it's nighttime, so they have to find a place to sleep. You can guess where Ryuji wanted to sleep, right? You guessed it, it's the red light district. Remember that rash he had in episode 3? Well, it's still there and he keeps crashing at it, even when he's sleeping, yuck. Ryuji and Yaguchi end up sleeping in a hotel near the ocean, and then they end up drawing each other naked. Now fully exposed, Ryuji can finally open up about his life. Good thing Ryuji and Yaguchi went to the ocean, because if not, he would have died at the train station. After taking a break, he's back to work on his craft, and now he's getting better. I don't know about you guys, but I would feel very embarrassed showing my t-shirt painting on my body. Unless I had the peak anime physique, then that would be different. But it is his art teacher, so I guess it would make sense to do that. Fast forward to the end, and Yaguchi is going to the final exam. And keep in mind, they're carrying very heavy luggage because there's pounds of art supplies in there. The examiner says, The elevator's not working. You're gonna have to take the stairs. You can imagine everybody in their heads complaining, right? This is what they sound like going up the stairs. Then we see Yaguchi struggling to get up the stairs. He accidentally trips and hits the wall. Then he feels the rash stop him from moving. If you think it's over for him, comment down below. I think it is. In episode 8 of Komi-san, Komi's whole family is going to visit a grave to pray and to talk to them. I noticed something. Why did they give the brother a generic anime haircut? Is he not important to the story? After visiting the grave, they visit their grandparents. We find out that Komi has a shy cousin, but Komi tries to get closer to her 
by tickling her. I don't know how that's affecting anything or why she's doing it. And if you know, leave a comment down below. Komi has a very serious grandmother. She even plays 20 questions with Komi because she wants to know exactly how her life has been. You think through all these questions, she's going to be just this very serious lady who says something really rude to her and then she leaves. But no, actually the opposite happens. It's a very touching scene where grandmother smiles because Komi says she finally has friends. Though, only if she knew she wants to make a hundred friends. So Komi and Tadano go to a summer festival and they end up playing a shooting game right when Tadano asks Komi, do you want to try? Yadano shows up. But as usual, while they're at the festival, there's a Jojo Bizarre Adventure scene. So there's this game where you have to pull on a string and at the end of the string there could be a prize or trash. But the Jojo part is the granny. The old lady has a whole scheme so you don't win the prize. But similar to Jojo, the show has the name of the person who wins. I don't know if you care, but we meet Tadano's sister. Tadano and his whole group meet at his house during summer to finish her help with homework. I know it's common to help you with their homework during summer in anime, but is it common everywhere else? Let me know in the comments section below. In episode 9 of Komi, we're introduced to a hillbilly named Inako Niko. I bet she's going to be Komi's friend because she's very strange. Yunako follows Komi around because she wants to be like her. She doesn't want to be a country girl no more. She wants to be a city girl. They go over to the Chinibu girl's house to play Smash, and the only two people playing are the Chinibu girl and the best friend. Komi for some reason helps her friend out with her coworker shift. Today, they are passing out tissues to the pedestrians. Of course, because it's the show, someone with an urgent case has to show up so Komi can get things done. <sighs> Jeez. Komi's already doing someone else's job. But she isn't getting paid the whole amount. She's only getting paid a third. What? Well, whatever. It's for a friend, right? Komi isn't the only one helping. There is a polar bear, but who's in the suit? Well, the only other person Komi knows. Well, it's Todd now. Whoa, wow. I didn't guess that. At the end of the episode, they're trying to say everyone's name as they do in the anime, but none except the best friend, as usual, was able to. Alright guys, it's the end of the video. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, smash that like button, and comment down below. Peace.